his own life on the line for his brothers. Oh no! Let, I, let me finish my topic. Let me let me let me go in. Y'all say let me finish. Let me finish, okay? Because there's no there's nothing about Christ that I've read that make you not want to believe in a brother that was a real brother. And you know what it shows us? It shows us that we're so used to rejecting ourselves, we don't understand when a brother will put his life on the line that that could be even real. No, no, no. No, no. no, no I'm, listen, I'm talking in general, oh, sister. Okay. I'm talking. I'm talking okay. about. Because this is going to go out through the whole world. In general, we, we are taught not to believe that we're anything. We're taught that. But when you see the principles this brother walked with, if, if I had a brother like that, I would never want to forsake him. Because I know this brother would have my back. Now, let, let me finish talking, brother. Let me finish talking, brother. I know this brother, that brother I read of in the scriptures, he would have my back to the end. Before I take a bullet, he would jump in front of me. If he see me doing something wrong, he would come to me and say, Listen, brother, you know you're not supposed to do that. You are people of law. You are people of honor. He would reprove and correct me before I go down the wrong path. So based on those principles alone, why wouldn't I want to believe in him? And then I would ask, and then, then I would ask, what is it that he did that make people don't want to believe in him? What did he do? Was he selling drugs to people? Was he, was he sleeping with somebody else's wife? Was he murdering people? What was he doing? Was he stabbing people? Was he shooting people? Or was he respecting people? So when I hear people, when I hear some people have an opinion, say, well, I know he existed, but he, I really don't believe, that tends to have me understand that you never really got into the Bible and read about this, brother. I'm talking about from a human aspect. Any brother, if, if a brother had, had, had half the equity and righteousness that Christ, Christ walked with that was living on my block, I would stay next to him. I'm bringing it down to, to on the lowest level. I need you to go to Timothy, the third chapter. Read that. Three and one. Start, start it. First Timothy. You got it? Mm -hmm. Read three and two. Start at three and one. Let's start at three and one. Let's do that. This is a true saying. If a man is... No, no, no. Timothy... First Timothy no, Titus chapter. 3 and 1. That's the one I want. Okay. Titus 3 and 1. Put them to be subject to principalities. First Titus, the third yeah, uh, Titus. chapter in the first verse. Titus. Right? Mm -hmm. Titus what? 3 and 1. Three and one. Yeah. So we're going to give you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring a few principles first. Titus. I want to bring a few principles first. Okay, I got you. I need you to start at the second verse. It says to speak. Oh, I get it. I start at the first and second verse. Put them, in, put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work. Go ahead. To speak evil of no man. To speak evil of no man, read. To be no brawlers. To be no brawlers. That means if you don't agree or, or, or you're trying to go against a person, you're ready to fight. Read. But gentle. Showing all meekness unto all men. And I brought this out because those are the principles we must walk with. Not, not to be ready to, to fight each other, go against each other, but to be gentle and meek to all men. That's why I say we don't ascribe to those brothers out on the corner cursing people out. A man of respect and honor and dignity that, that, that knows the most how don't curse another man out. You don't have to, just because you, you know what this other man is capable of, the way he thinks. He has no control. This is embedded in him. This is how he was raised. This is how he was conceived. That don't mean you got to be cursing him out. You just understand his ways and actions. Therefore, he can never catch you off point. He'll never catch you off guard. Because you, you expect this from him. You know what I'm saying? He know no other way. This is what, he, this is what he's taught this, to, to, to create chaos amongst the masses, amongst the people. He always have everybody at war to benefit himself, but he just stay on top. So that's because you know I understand that, brother. I understand this more white or black. That don't mean I'm demeaning him. I just know how I got to deal with this man. You understand what I'm saying? So you say you got to be scholarly. I mean, I'm being scholarly because I know this. I know, I know my enemy. I, I know who my enemy is just by his ways and actions. Not by his appearance, just by his ways and actions. Okay. Thank you. Now, 
I'm just letting you know why we don't ascribe to that type of thing. If another brother want to do it, that's his business. But why, but why, I mean, what, what, what's, what's about the good way of thinking? By knowing your enemy and knowing what your enemy, your enemy is capable of, and what he has been doing for gen- centuries and centuries, that's a smart man, you ask me, to recognize your enemy just by when he opened up his mouth, just by anything you do, you just know, and you're ready for him. So you can counteract any move he make. That's... How that's going to benefit our people getting out of the condition? Because our there. people don't know. See, our people take, but our enemy, because they don't, they don't recognize our enemy. They're taking our enemy for being our friend or the white man or whatever man. They take it for whatever he put in, in front of our food, in front of our plate. We take that for food. Like, oh, he got to be right. And that's how he's keeping, that's how he's keeping the masses under, under pressure. You know what I'm saying? That, that's not what I asked you, brother. Well, I mean... Because we here to come to a conclusion. I'm asking, so what, what, how, is, how is that going to get our people out of the condition they're in today? What you talking about? Because you need to know who your enemy is. Therefore, you won't be trying to be all cozy cozy with your enemy. Knowing that this man don't have your best interests at heart. Okay. All right. Well... You're trying to be Americanized and thinking this is the way of life. In reality, it's not. Well, brother... I, I don't ascribe to that. I don't ascribe to that. And the Bible tells us not to ascribe to that. Because... Yeah, but they've been using yeah. the Bible for... Brother, you, brother you're going to interject? Listen, you notice when you speak, I don't I don't cut you off? But go ahead. So yeah, I can so show you how I the, They've been using the Bible to show they dirty religion for years. Everything they do in the name of Christ, in the name of Christ. Oh, they even enslaved us in the name of Christ. They put to be Christian, holy Christian men. But yet they put people in bondage for centuries. You know, you understand what I'm saying? And they always, I mean, even going to war now, though, we going to war against the, um, the infidel. This is the crusade, the Christian crusade. They still using that thing to go to war. They always been going to war in the name of Christ, in the name of Christianity. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? You can't dispute that. It's been, it's been I, I'm still it's trying to find out what your point is. The point that he's making, the point that he's making, you, you, you're pointing to the Bible to say that we should be meek. And what he's saying is, because you're saying that in that way we can speak to many. What he's saying is you only need to educate one. You only need to educate us. And if in offending our enemy, you, you educate us, so be it. He's okay. saying, why point to a Bible that's been used to okay. enslave us? All right. You understand? And that's just his opinion, and we got to respect okay. his opinion. Because but we're that, bringing so that, that's what you're saying, brother? Okay, good. Thank you. You make it clear. Okay, okay. Thank, thank you. Okay, okay, thank you. So I'm glad you had to put that out because this, by you making that statement, it's going to prove that the Bible is true. And I'm going to show you how it's proved the Bible is true because they didn't use the Bible to enslave the people. They learned, they used doctrine. A doctrine to enslave a people because if they taught you the Bible, they would have taught you that. The people in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, that came off of slave ships were you. So they didn't teach you the Bible. If they would have taught you the Bible, they would have taught you in Revelations 2 and 9 and 3 and 9, Christ identified those Jewish people over there as being impostors and lies. So they didn't teach you the Bible. Hold up. Also, don't interrupt me, brother, because I didn't interrupt you. If they were teaching the Bible, brother, they would have taught in Matthew 15 and 24, Christ said he came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. They would have taught you that the Lord said that his people would come over here in a strange land and discontinue their heritage and not know who they are. They would have taught us that one day our people would be on corners teaching a doctrine of the Gentiles that gave them that doctrine. They would have taught us that one day our people would be on corners teaching a doctrine of the Gentiles that gave them that doctrine. So they didn't teach the Bible. They taught a doctrine. And that doctrine predated the, the Bible. That doctrine was a Gentile Babylonian custom. I'm going to give you an example. Okay? A lot of people might not believe in the Bible, but I bet you probably 80% of the people in here are going to celebrate Christmas. Now, they didn't teach Christmas out of the Bible. They taught Christmas from Babylonian European pagan customs. So they didn't use the Bible to teach lies. They taught you what they wanted to teach with a Bible in front of them. And because they had a Bible in front of them, you thought they were teaching out of the Bible. But the Bible is true. 
The Bible is true. Let me show you something, brother. Let, let, let me show it. Go to Jeremiah 17 and 5. Go to Deuteronomy 28. Okay. Now, I'm going to get into the subject for a second in one moment. But before I get into the subject, I need, I'm going to ask a question. And I need y'all to write it down so that y'all can be focused. So, I, I don't want to be all over the place. We late enough. I need someone in here, since they don't believe in the Bible, or whoever don't. I want those particular people to show me one thing out of the Bible that's false while we get in this scripture. Okay? Because in order for you to say something is not right, that means you have examined it. Okay? That means you have looked at it, examined it, and can point out the error. Can I just say one no, thing? No, no, not until not I'm finished. Because, because we're going to stick in the Bible now. No, no more opinion. Okay. It, no, 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 no more opinion. Listen. The first thing. Listen, listen. Listen. If someone can show me one thing that's wrong in this Bible, okay. All right. So I'm gonna give y'all y'all shot right there while I'm getting these scriptures. All right. Get what you have, brother. Jeremiah 17 and 5, and Deuteronomy 28, and Deuteronomy 27. Jeremiah 17 verse 4. Read it. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage. The Lord says his people will discontinue from their heritage. We are the perfect example of people that have discontinued from our heritage. Everyone to kick knowledge, but if you stand people up and ask them, who you are? What nation are you? Where you come from? We'll get 30 different answers from the same black family. You'll get 30 different answers. But when you line up Chinese people, you can line up 10 Chinese, and all of them will tell you they're Chinese. Line up 10 Arabs, they'll all tell you where they came from. So it must be talking about us. The people that have discontinued from, from their heritage. And it behooves me how a people that don't have a heritage, that don't have no idea of their history and where they come from, how can you deny when, when the Lord is trying to give you back what you lost? That, that, that lets you know that they're a trick have been founded. They wanted you out of the book because